Welcome back. This is part two of our attention learning module. And in this part, we're going to focus on the Stroop effect. And we'll even do a class demo. There's a link to that in the bottom of the YouTube video. So check it out if you want to try out the experiment yourself. We're going to start with the concept of selective attention. This is the ability to selectively focus or process task relevant information and ignore or avoid processing task irrelevant information. Those are very general ideas. We use them in everyday life all the time, I'm trying to focus on something and just like block out all that distracting stuff. These abilities are commonly studied in congruency tasks like the Stroop task. These tasks generally show people some information and there is going to be target information that you're supposed to focus on. This is the task relevant information. And there's going to be some distracting information that you're not supposed to focus on. Let's take a look. Here's an example of the Stroop task. So what are we looking at? We have over here, well, in both sides, we've got words and they're in different colors. The task is to name the ink color of these stimuli. So this is red, that's blue, that's green. This one here is yellow and that one's green and that one's red. If you want to experience the strip effect for yourself, what I'll have you do is just pause the video and try reading the color names from this list as fast as you can. All right, I'm going to do it right now. So I'm going to start red, blue, green, yellow, blue, red, green, red, blue. Not so bad. Felt pretty easy, actually. And notice that there is a match between the word and the color. It's the word red in the color red the word blue in the color blue. So these ones all match. And th these conditions are pretty easy. The task here is not to read the word, actually. It's to read or to say the color. But when the word and the color are the same, there's this facilitation effect making it very easy to do that. If you want to experience the weirdness of the Stroop effect, try reading the colors in this list as fast as you can. I'll try right now. Um, okay. Yellow, blue, green, red, blue, yellow, red, green, blue, green, red. Uh, so that was harder. And if you'll notice here, the word and the color are different. They're mismatching. So it's the word red and the color yellow, the word blue and the color green. The ones on the left are sometimes called congruent stimuli because the word and color are congruent or the same and the ones on the left are sometimes called incongruent stimuli because the word and color are different. So if you pause the video and tried reading both of these things and you felt that the one on the left was easier than the one on the right then you just experienced the Stroop effect. All right this uh, let's be a little bit more specific here with some of our terms, this task and performance in this task is often used to measure selective attention abilities. And let's take a closer look at how that works. Here we have two example stimuli. This one is the word red and red. It's a congruent stimuli. It's, it's the kind that people are pretty good at. It's easy to say the word red here, or sorry, it's easy to say the color red compared to this condition here. The correct answer here is say red, but the stimulus is, uh, the distracting stimulus is the word blue. So making it an incongruent item. Just to return to some of those terms I'd used earlier, each Stroop stimulus has a color and a word component the color component is the target information, and the word component is the distracting information. I've got in this fake data graph here, two kinds of conditions referring to congruent and incongruent. And this is plotting 
how fast you are to respond to these things. These are ideas about how performance should look as a function of your selective attention ability. So let's imagine that you have the ability to do 100% target selection. What does that mean? That means you can totally focus on the color 100% and just totally block out the word as if it's not even there, All right? So how fast would you be to name the color in this condition versus this condition? The idea is if you can just only see the color and block out the word entirely, you should be the same in both conditions because it wouldn't matter what the word was. So if you have focused 100% on the colors, there should be no difference between the congruent condition and the incongruent condition. And this bar in the middle uh, shows probably what happens to most people. For, for the most part, it's a little bit easier to name the color of congruent stimuli. And it's a little bit harder or slower, so this is going up, to name the color of the incongruent stimulus. And that suggests that you weren't totally ab able to ignore the word information because it's making it a little bit faster when the word matches, making you a little bit slower when the word mismatches. Now, what do you think would happen to the size of this difference? And to be clear, this difference that we're now looking at here is referred to as the Stroop effect. The effect of the congruency manipulation on color naming performance, color naming reaction time. So what if you were really distracted by the word, like you tried to read the word red here, sorry, you tried to read, I'm getting screwed up. You try to say that this thing is red, but you get screwed up because the word says blue. So if you uh, have increased your distractor processing, you might be even slower when the word and color mismatch. And you might even be a little bit faster than normal when they match because if you're going over here and you're trying to say the color red, I mean, the fact that the word and color are the same, it might help you a little bit. So the takeaway here is that the more people process the distracting information, the bigger the Stroop effect should be. And the more you can focus or ignore, focus on the target and ignore the word information, the smaller and smaller your Stroop effect should be. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about some experiments that people have done to investigate uh, whether or not people can control how much word information they're attending to. So is it even possible? Can, can you change the size of your Stroop effect? For example, if you really, really focus on ignoring the words, you get a small Stroop effect. And if you really, really focus on the words, or that is you, or you, you're failing at ignoring the word information, that does, can you make the effect bigger? We're talking about the list-wide proportion congruent manipulation. This is a demonstration showing one way to make the Stroop effect smaller and bigger. And people have interpreted this as reflecting a change in how you're using selective attention. So what is this manipulation? I'm going to use uh, talk, talk about it over here. We've got a 75% congruent or high proportion congruent list right there. This is just a short example list, but let's walk through it real quick. Red, red and red, blue and blue, green and green, yellow and yellow, blue and blue, red and red. Notice those are all congruent. They're all the matching kind. And here, oh, yellow and green, that's a mismatch. Red and red, blue and blue. So there's um, mostly congruent items 
and not very many incongruent items. If you were doing an experiment, and let's say you're doing this for like 20 minutes, and every time you see one of these things pop up on the screen, almost every time the word matches the color. So it's actually a pretty easy task. You, you could just read whatever is there. So red, blue, green, yellow. Every once in a while, you'll get one of those hard ones. And if you'd adopted a strategy of increasing how much you're reading the words, because they, most, they mostly match the correct response, when you get that odd one out, and like this one here, like you get this one, and you're like, green, oh, no, you, I should have said yellow. You know, you can make a mistake or you'd be really slow on those rare incongruent trials. Over here, we have a different list-wide proportion congruent situation. Here, on every trial, most of the items are the incongruent type. So we got yellow and red, green and blue, red and green, blue and yellow, and so on. Almost every time, you can't, the, the word will give you the wrong answer. So you have to really try to ignore that word almost every time uh, to focus on the color. Every once in a while, the word and color will match, like we've got right here, green matches, but not very often. If most of your trials require you to ignore that word information, you might decide to, hey, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna ignore that. I'm gonna try to ignore the word information. You're gonna practice doing it better, better job of ignoring, and you might decrease the Stroop effect. So people have, many people have done these experiments manipulating the proportion of congruent items in a list. Here's what the results look like. I'm just gonna focus up here. And we've got our reaction times for the congruent items and our reaction times for the incongruent items. And we're looking at the high proportion congruent list. That's when most of them are congruent. The difference here is bigger compared to the difference over here. This is the low proportion congruent situation where most of the items are incongruent. If we uh, subtracted the incongruent from the congruent, that's, that's the Stroop effect. We can plot it like this. How big was the Stroop effect when most of the items were congruent? It was 100 milliseconds in this example. And how big was the Stroop effect when most of the items were incongruent, it got smaller by about half. All right, if we go back to this graph here, when most of the items are congruent, people are maybe deciding to do more word reading. So the difference between incongruent and congruent gets bigger. When most of the items are incongruent, people really try to block out the words and the Stroop effect gets smaller. Okay. So let me say, all of these different papers, they manipulated the proportion of congruent items in a list, and they found that the Stroop effect did indeed change sizes. So why did that happen? What, process, uh, what processes are responsible for the list-wide proportion congruent effect. We're gonna consider a strategic account and a learning account. And then we're gonna move on to a class experiment where we could test ideas related to the strategic account. Okay, here's the strategic account. It, it is the idea that, well, people can predict whether or not they're likely to get a congruent trial in the next, uh, on the next trial. So if you're in a situation where most of the trials are congruent, 75% congruent, what you can do is you can prepare in advance of every trial to attend to the word dimension. You can be like, all right, I'm waiting for another one to come up and it pops up and you're like, I'm just gonna say red because it might be written there and the color usually matches the word. So if you're preparing to read those words, um, that would be a using that would be using like a endogenous attention or 
a controlled uh, strategy to tell yourself to process more of that word information. And that could have a consequences of making a big Stroop effect. When you're in the other kind of list, this is when most of the items are incongruent. Only 25% of the time do you get the easy ones. And so you might be preparing a different kind of strategy. You might be thinking, okay, well, I'm going to now try to not read the word. Whatever that word is, I'm just going to try to not read it. Because it, it always messes me up. And if you were successful at ignoring that word information, that should make your Stroop effect get smaller because the word information would no longer be interfering with your performance. Here's a totally different kind of explanation of the effect. I thought I'd bring it up because uh, there's often multiple perspectives and multiple plausible explanations of the same thing, of the same phenomena. So here's a learning account. One thing we can start with here is we can note that when you manipulate the proportion of congruent versus incongruent items, this often means that some particular Stroop items will be presented more than others. Let's look at this table here. This, this kind of stuff can be controlled for, but in a lot of those early experiments, people would run uh, they would create Stroop items by pairing, say, these four color words with the four colors. So you could get red and red, green and green, blue and blue, yellow and yellow, or red and green, red and blue, red and yellow, and so on. Now, if I was going to make a list of items where most of them were congruent, there's only four, to, four particular combinations that are congruent items, red and red, green and green, blue and blue, yellow and yellow. And if I want to make those ones happen more than the other ones, uh, this could be a frequency table showing how many times I present each item. So I might present the congruent items nine times each and only one, uh, one each of all the other incongruent items. In a low proportion congruent situation, if I wanted to, I would have to present more incongruent items, right? And that kind of could work out this way, where every item gets presented three times each. So there's a confound potentially here. Yes, we're manipulating the proportion of congruent items, but in this condition, some of the items happen a lot and the other ones don't. So you get more practice on the congruent items right here compared to the incongruent items. One thing we know that does happen is that people get better at things they practice. So you might just get faster for naming congruent items because you're practicing those specific ones a lot. You might be not very fast for the incongruent items because you didn't practice them very much. So this could be one reason why you get a big Stroop effect in the high proportion congruent condition where there's a really big difference between ones you practice a lot and ones you didn't practice a lot compared to a smaller Stroop effect in the low proportion congruent condition where you practice everything about the same amount. This is a way of um, questioning whether or not if we observe a change in a Stroop effect as a result of a manipulation, does it mean that people, that the change in the Stroop effect reflects a change in how people were selectively attending? It might not. It could reflect a change in some confounding variable, like how much people practice something. So, we have these two kinds of contrasting processing accounts of the list-wide proportion congruent effect. And the, the first one is that people have strategies. So they decide to focus more on the word information or focus less on the word information. And that's why the Stroop effect changes sizes. Or we have this practice or simple stimulus response learning explanation. Maybe people just get faster for the things they do more. And the change in the Stroop effect doesn't have to do with changes in selective attention. 
So just to illustrate uh, an example about how researchers in this domain might go about trying to evaluate these ideas or test these hypotheses, let's consider a kind of experiment that we could do. So if you wanted to follow up on these ideas, what could we do? What kind of experiment could we run? I'll suggest that we run an in-class experiment to test the voluntary control account. So here's our question. Can people voluntarily control how they attend to word information? I'm putting my hands like this, I don't know. That's a theme that I've been talking about this entire lecture. The idea that if you focus more on the distracting word information, your stroopic effect is going to get really big. And if you can look at a word and ignore what it says somehow, that should reduce your stroop effect. So the question is, can you look directly at words and attend more to them or less to them, depending on your decision to do that? Here's the logic. If people can choose to ignore word information, then the Stroop effect should get smaller. If people can choose to increase their focus on word information, then the Stroop effect should get larger. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's possible that people can't do this and then we won't find differences in the Stroop effect. I'm going to propose in our experiment that we will use an instructional manipulation. And this manipulation will be pretty simple. We do in a Stroop effect, and these words will come up that will say, ignore words. That will tell you, as a participant, to ignore the word information while you're doing a Stroop task. In another condition, we'll have you do the Stroop effect, the Stroop task, same as before, but words will come up and say, focus on words. And in this part of the experiment, your job will be to try to increase your attention to the word information while you do a Stroop task. And if you can control how much word information you're attending to, we can then measure your Stroop effect in both conditions. So let's consider some predictions. What do we predict will happen? What would our results look like in a graph if it is the case that focusing more on uh, words or not focusing more on words would change the Stroop effect. So I'm going to do two things. Uh, first of all, what would our results look like in a graph? I think if I press this button, okay, I'm going to see if I can write some stuff down here. Um, hopefully this is working. Here's our pretend graph. Let's put reaction times here. And this is going to be really fast. This is going to be slow. Let's put a 500 there. Just as a general ballpark, people can often look at one of these stimuli and press a button. It takes about 500 milliseconds. All right. Let's think about the condition where you're going to try to ignore the words. What's going to happen here? If you can do this perfectly well, let's, let's imagine the, the most extreme version of this experiment. If you can do this perfectly well, you can totally ignore the words. Let's say your performance on congruent, I'm going to put a little marker up here should be the same as your performance on incongruent. Just like that. You might, you might see a graph like this. No difference. There's no Stroop effect. Now, we're going to have a condition where 
where you're going to try to focus on the word information even though you know you're not supposed to in a normal Stroop experiment because you're always going to be trying to name the color and ignoring the word but what if we what if you focused on the word what if you decided to focus on the word Let, let's think about how those predictions would pan out I'm, I'm going to think okay when the word and the color are the same I'm looking at that word and it's the same response I need to make it's going to help me make the response pretty quickly so where should the congruent bar be? I'm going to say it's down here, right? It's gotten even faster. When I'm focusing on the word information and the word and the color match, it's going to make me faster. And what about those times when the word and the color don't match? Well, I'm guessing that's going to slow me down because now I'm reading that word, I'm focused on that word, and uh, it's giving me the wrong answer. And I've got to like stop myself from focusing on that word and focus on the color. So this, this could be potentially the results we would get here if people can choose to ignore words versus focus on words just by deciding to in their, uh, using their endogenous or controlled attention. I've got an experiment set up for us to try this to see if this actually happens or not. So you can go ahead and try it out if you want to. In order to do this, you have to head to the first assignment in the learning module. There's a link to the experiment in this YouTube video also. Uh, I'll jump over there right now. So let's see, we'll head over to the course web page. Got to flip over here. Here's our course web page. And if we go to the attention module, so have to add these videos, but we go into the engagement section, participate in a short Stroop experiment. Here it is. Now this is actually a real experiment. We've got IRB approval in the computational cognition lab to run this experiment. Let me show you what happens if you click this button and I'll say a few things before we start. So because this is a real experiment, this means a couple things. One, you can choose to do this or not do this. You don't have to do this. If you don't want to do this experiment, then uh, you can do the alternative assignment here, brainstorm a Stroop experiment. If you do want to participate, then your data will be stored and potentially reported in a scientific article down the line. Uh, I'm not sure this is, I mean, we're mainly, I mainly made this for a class demonstration, but who knows? It's possible that at some point the data that we collect from this experiment could be interesting or useful for addressing uh, different issues in the Stroop literature. So when you click this button, what you're going to see is a web page. You'll need to have a keyboard to do this experiment. It takes about five minutes. Click through. Uh, I will invite you to read the consent form to fully understand what's going to happen here. And you can accept or decline. You can quit at any time. If you press accept, then you will enter some demographic information. All of the data that is collected here is completely anonymous. And you're going to do a Stroop experiment in three phases. So the first part's a practice phase, it looks like this. Um, the instructions are you're going to see on each trial a word in a color. What you have to do is press R, G, B, or Y on the keyboard to identify the color, not the word. So the, the correct button here would be R because this thing is red. Let me do it. I'm going to press this button. All right, B. I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can. G. Blue. G. Oh, I got, I got that one. So if you, I think I'm getting them all right. If you make a mistake, let's see, I'll make a mistake here. It tells you if you're right or wrong. So it's reminding you what you're supposed to do on each trial. There's not too many of them. The goal is to do this as fast as you can. So as soon as you see that stimulus, figure out what color it is and press the right response on the keyboard. Oh, it's good to get your fingers ready to go. Ooh, that one's hard. Yellow. Yellow. 
Okay, how many more trials? This is the, just the practice phase here. Green, red, red. All right, so that was the practice phase. Just gets you familiar with what you're doing. And now what we're going to do is do it two more times. So now that you're ready to go, you're familiarized with what's going on here. First, it's gonna kind of randomly do this. You'll be told to focus on the words or ignore the words. And this is that manipulation that we're trying to, trying to see if it works. So here, when you get the focus on the words instructions, you're gonna do the same thing, the same task, but please try to focus your attention as much as possible on the word information. Your task is still to respond to the color of the word, not the identity of the word, and you can press any key to continue. So it's up to you to try to do this. Uh, how about I do it just, I'll, I'll try to do it. Okay, I'm gonna look at those words. Blue, yeah, blue. Oof, blue. <laughs> yeah. I don't like doing this because blue, blue, red, okay. So you could fast forward to this part or you could wait two seconds, no, oh, a minute or so, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep focusing on the word even though sometimes it doesn't help me. Oof, that one hurt. Yellow. Green. Yellow. Red. Yellow. Blue. Come on. How fast can I do this? Green. Yay. I think I'm getting most right anyways. And I'm, I'm really trying every time. I'm trying to look at that word. All right. So that was, that's the focus on the word task. Here's the final phase. Here, you get to try to ignore the words. So you have to do the same thing again. Every time you look at that stimulus, ignore the word. Let me clarify that something that you could try to do here. You could try to like blur your eyes and not look at the word that way. That is more equivalent to not uh, trying to not perceive the word. So what I want you to do here is look directly at the word. Don't try to avoid looking at the word in terms of like, don't look over here. You've got to stare at the word, but not attend to it, All right? That would be a good test of whether you can control how much you're ignoring the word. You have to look at it and then not attend to it because it wouldn't count if, if you're just doing this, oh, I can't see the word. That's different from not, uh, that's one, one way to ignore it. Uh, failing to perceive is a, a different kind of thing that we're, we're not looking at. So try to look at the word directly, but not attend to it. I'm going to try to do that right now. So look at it, and I'm just going to look at the colors as best I can. Blue. Yellow. All right, see if I can do it faster. Blue. And now I'm... I'm not averting my gaze or anything like that. I'm just trying to look at the color, I guess, and just not see those words. Oops. I mean, whoops. <laughs> Green. Sometimes I forget what buttons I'm pressing. This I'm not doing very good here. So I've got to focus more on the colors. And green. Red, yellow, yellow, green, yellow. There's only a few more trials left, I'm sure. Okay. Now, if you're still with me, then what we should be able to do here is take a look at our results. And what we're seeing here is results from the practice phase. It's how fast your reaction time was for the congruent versus incongruent stimuli and your stroop effect. 
how f uh, and we've got that for the focus on the word phase and we've got that for the ignore the word phase what if you're going to do the assignment for this uh, learning module I'm going to have you copy down all this information so as soon as you get here make sure you copy all this off so that you can report it um, in your assignment but we can look through the data that your assignment is actually to look at this data and compare it to our predictions for the performance in the class that we just discussed. So for example, um, let's see, we were predicting a big Stroop effect when you tried to focus on the word information. And let's see what happened in the word focus phase. I had a pretty big Stroop effect. Wow, 349 milliseconds. That's pretty big. I was way faster when the word and color matched compared to when it didn't match. Now, what happened when I tried to ignore the words as much as I could? Huh. Well, overall, I was faster here. See, my, both of those numbers are much faster. And actually, the Stroop effect was kind of negative, and it was very small. I'm surprised. I, I've done the Stroop effect so many times on myself that I usually show really weird results. But uh, oh, that's I guess that's I guess my results were pretty close to what we were predicting might happen. So if you want to head over here and try it out yourself, you can go and see what your results look like. Once you're done, click this button, and that's it. You're done the study. All right, so I hope you decide to uh, check that out and see what it's like. We are at the end of the lecture, so what's next is go ahead and take that quiz, complete any additional assignments, uh, one of them being trying out the strip experiment. And next week we'll do our second last module of the term on language. And I'm going to fix that typo, I suppose. One day soon. All right, see you next week. I oh, forgot to mention, if I have time, even though uh, trying out the experiment is an individual assignment and you can go try it and see your own data, it would be interesting to get all of the class uh, data that we collect and take a look and see what happens on average across everybody. So if I find the time to do that, I will post another video at the end of this week after people have had a chance to participate and we will see if we can answer the question. So what will our actual results look like? We predicted what they might look like. We can collect some data, find out if that's what actually happens. So stay tuned. All right, see you then and then again next week.